Islam. Shalom. Hola. Aloha. Assalamu alaikum. Oseo. Bonjour. Peace and love to all the Moors and Muslims all over the world. This is your brother, Zach Day, Indigenous American Moor, coming to you live and in full effect. Thank you for joining me once again. Please hit that like button, thumbs up, share the video, subscribe to the channel to get your notifications whenever I'm dropping new videos. Thank you for rocking with me. We're back at it again. Another video on the Black's Law Dictionary, the fourth edition. Let's jump into it with these definitions. Don't forget you can pause the video to get those definitions whenever you need. Let's just make sure it's legible for you. All right, let's start it. I want to start off right here with C slash O. The symbol stands for care of. So anybody doing any kind of postage, um, any kind of uh, business with the U.S. Postal Service, the U.S. Uh, Parcel Service, um, the care of, you know, whenever you add a your domicile, location, the mailing address, whatever it might be for business, add this care of and this symbols for care of. That means you get parcels there, mail there, letters, whatever it is, um, but it's not putting you in the, dur the jurisdiction of a postal code like a uh, the capital letters that they put on the for the state's uh, code, like for uh, let's say for Maine, it's like M A. For California, it's CA instead of actually writing out California. That puts you inside of the jurisdiction. But, you know, whenever you're doing postage, read a little bit more on this CO. But just so you know, it is in law. It stands for care of. Let's continue. Code. All right, so this code is pertaining to like code, statutes, ordinances. But exactly what is a code when you think about law? So, code, it says a collection, a, comp a compendium. Or revision of laws right so it's pretty much just a collection of laws um, specifically on like a topic or a subject just to make it more organized see it says here a complete system of positive law Sorry. specifically arranged and uh, significantly arranged and promulg promulgated by legislative authorities. All right, so um, I'm just looking for actual more like in depth detail of it, but you can pause this and read it, get more of an understanding of exactly what the code is. But I just wanted to touch on that a little bit just in case people weren't exactly sure exactly what like like um, what's pertaining to as far as like code, statutes, ordinances, and uh, pertaining to law. Right, so next is gonna be coerce, okay, compelled to comply, constrained to obedience or submission in a vigorous or forceful, forcible manner. Alright, so that's coerce and coercion. What a lot of these policy enforcers do when they're forcing contracts upon you on the side of the road or the highway. Um this coercion. It says uh, compulsion, constraint, compelling by force or arms. They compose you to contract with them by saying, oh, you're going to go to jail or um, by stressing you saying, like, oh, do you have a warrant or uh, do you have or are you on probation or something like that or parole? Um, just trying to get you to waive your rights and they're using coercion. It's pretty much force and it's threat to compel you to some sort of action and the action is normally to, is to contract with them pretty much putting your name on some kind of contract all right so that's completely illegal that makes the contract void all right so let's continue commodities i want to touch a little bit more on this exactly the exact definition of commodities and what do they mean 
those things which are useful or serviceable, particularly articles of merchandise, movable in trade. All right, let's get a little more into it. It says goods, all right? Goods are commodities. Wares are commodities. Merchandise of any kind are commodities. And they are movable articles of trade or commerce, all right? So this actually pertains to people, human capital. Now, I don't mean flesh and blood living people. I mean the corporate fiction, the corporate legal entities, the straw man, those social security numbers uh, with the name on the birth certificate or the certificate of birth. Uh, hum they have people labeled as persons, which are legal entities, fictions, corporations, and those are goods. Therefore, they're movable articles, pretty much anything serviceable. And so that's how humans, you know, the flesh and blood, which are connected to those legal entities, are being used as commodities and transmitting utilities for these corporations. That's exactly how they're doing it. Okay, all right. So commodity in the most comprehensive sense, convenience, accommodations, profit, Benefit, advantage, interest, commodiousness. All right, these were what are commodities? Some kind of benefit, some kind of profit, and advantage to society, pretty much. And humans produce or are labeled as all of these things are chattel, are labeled as chattel property when it comes to these these persons. I mean, persons, not humans. These persons as legal fictions. So. Just remember commodities and transmitting utilities. That's how they're doing it. All right, next. I want to read upon common humanity doctrine. I haven't really seen this, but I wanted to read it and just commit it to memory exactly what it is. So it has to do with like uh, transit and commerce and things of that nature. It says where a passenger becomes sick or is injured while en route. All right, carried a carrier owes duty under common humanity doctrine to render the passenger such reasonable care and attention as common humanity would uh, would dictate. All right, so it's like um, if you're a route, so if you're on uh, transit, on if you're on a train, um, if you're on uh, airline, you're on a cruise ship, something like that, you're moving. You're traveling traversing it's pretty much saying that the captain or the operators have under common humanity doctrine they have an obligation to render you aid while you're in while they're, they're servicing you while you're under their care pretty much all right by law it was like common humanity um you know it's like common sense you know, common human nature Okay, so let's keep going. Common knowledge is what courts may declare applicable to actions without necessity of proof. It is knowledgeable that every intelligent person has. All right, it is, it is knowledge that every intelligent person has. It includes matters of learning, experience, history, and facts, which judicial notice may be taken. All right, so that can be looked upon as common knowledge, something that everybody should know. Is water wet? Yes. You know. All right, common law. I know we went over this before, but I just want to touch it again. All right, as distinguished from Roman law, the modern civil law, the canon law, and other systems, and the common law is that body of law and jur uh, juristic theory which was originated, developed, and formulated, and is administered in England and has obtained among most of the states of the people of peoples of Anglo-Saxon stock. Okay, so mostly places where the Anglo-Saxons um, colonized and were allowed to, you know, uh, pretty much allowed to colonize. So, uh, 
as distinguished from law created by and enacted uh, legislature and common law comprise the body of those principles and rules of action related to the government and surety of peoples, I mean of persons and property which derive their authority solely from usage and customs of immor immemorial inequity or from the judgment and decrees of the courts recognizing, affirming, and enforcing such usage and customs and in this sense, particularly the ancient unwritten law of England. I wanted to definitely this last part here, common law, particularly the ancient, ancient unwritten law of England. So before you think that this belongs to the British or the Anglo-Saxons, the original Europeans were the Moors. That's why Europe is actually named after the Empress Europa. When you look at it. And Europe is just a small part of the entire that entire part of Asia, which was called Eurasia. So they broke Europe off of Eurasia and just made them two separate parts. Instead of Eurasia, they made Europe and Asia, but all together it's Eurasia. All right. And the original Europeans were the Moors, and Europe was named after the Queen or the Empress, the Moorish Empress Europa. You can look this up, verify it. All right. Keep on moving. Went over these definitions before. Next definition, hope is legible. I want to check out Commonwealth. What exactly is Commonwealth? The public or common well or welfare. This cannot be regarded as a technical term of public law though often used in political science it generally designates when so employed a republican frame of government mm, very important generally for a republican frame of government which here in america we should be under every single state is guaranteed a republican form of government look it up it's in the constitution Right. Um, one in which the welfare and rights of the entire mass of people are the main consideration rather than the privileges of a class or the will of a monarch or it may designate the body of citizens living under such a government sometimes it may denote the corporate entity or the government of a juro society or state possessing powers of self-government in respect of its immediate concerns but forming an integral part of a larger government or nation very important that's what a commonwealth is it should be taken into consideration all the people the mass of people not just a certain class or or so-called rulers aristocracy or monarchs it should be everybody. Everybody's word or everybody's voice matters in a commonwealth. All right. That's as far as I wanted to go with this theme out on the Black's Law Dictionary, fourth edition. Thank you once again for joining me. It's your brother Zach Day, Indigenous American Moore. Peace and love. Bye. <laughs>